Hi boys and girls. So I've realized that the only way we're going to finish our in-class reading book, George's Secret Key to the Universe, was if I read it to you online. So please keep in line with uh, as I read, listen, so you're not too far behind in the book. But this will kind of be a good way to connect us all uh, through a common book. And I will have some discussion questions that I will post about this book as we go ahead and read. So to continue where we left off, Chapter 13. The comet was now traveling straight again, in front of them. The sun was bigger and brighter than before, but still very small compared to its size when seen from Earth. George spotted another bright dot that he hadn't noticed before, a dot that was quickly growing bigger as they approached it. What's over there, he asked, pointing ahead to the right. Is that another planet? But there was no reply. When he looked around, Annie had gone. George untied himself from the comet and followed the trail of footprints he had left in the icy powder. He carefully gauged the length of his steps so he wouldn't find himself flying off the comet again. After climbing carefully over a small icy hill, he saw her. She was peering into a hole in the ground. Around the hole were bits and pieces of the rock that seemed to have been spat out by the comet itself. George walked over and looked down at the hole, too. It was a few feet deep, with nothing much to be seen at the bottom. What is it, he asked. Have you found something? Well, you see, I went for a walk, Annie started to explain. Why didn't you tell me, George interrupted her. You were shouting at me. About not shouting, said Annie. So I thought I'd just go by myself, because there'd be no one to get mad at me, she added. I'm not mad at you, shouted George. Yes, you are, shouted Annie, balling her gloved hands into fists and shaking them at George. As she did so, something extraordinary happened. A little fountain of gas and dirt blew up from the ground just next to her. Now look what you've done, complained George. But just as he spoke, another little fountain erupted through the rock right next to him. It formed a cloud of dust that slowly dispersed. Annie, what's happening, said. Uh, nothing, said Annie. It's all fine. Don't worry. But she did not sound very sure. Why don't we go and sit down where we were before, she suggested. It's nicer over there. But as they walked back, more and more little geysers of dust erupted around them, leaving a haze of smoke in the air. Neither of them felt very safe, but neither of them wanted to admit it. They just walked around more and more quickly towards the place they had been sit sitting before. Without saying a word, they anchored themselves to the comet once more. In the sky, the bright dot George had seen growing had become much bigger. It now looked like a planet with red and blue stripes. That's Jupiter, Annie said, breaking the silence. But she was whispering now. She didn't sound like the confident show-off she had been earlier. It's the biggest one of the planets, about twice the volume of Saturn. That makes it more than a thousand times the volume of Earth. Does Jupiter have moons too, George asked. Yes, it does, said Annie, but I don't know how many. I didn't count them last time I was here, so I'm not sure. Have you really been here before, George looked suspicious. Of course I have, said Annie. George wasn't sure he actually believed her. Once again, the comet and Annie and George started at to fall. As they fell, George gazed at Jupiter, even by Saturn standards, Jupiter was enormous. As they flew by, Annie pointed out the big red spot on Jupiter's surface. That thing, she said, is a huge storm. It's been on there for hundreds and hundreds of years. Maybe even more. I don't know. It's over twice the size of Earth. As they moved away from Earth, George counted how many moons he could spot. Four big ones, he said. Four big what? Moons. Jupiter has four big moons. Lots and lots of moons. I think even more moons than Saturn. Oh, okay, said Annie, who was sounding nervous now. If you say so. George was worried. It wasn't like Annie would agree with everything he said. He noticed she had shuffled a little closer to him. She slipped her hand in its space glove into his, and all around them, new jets of gas and dust were springing up out of the thin rock, each one spitting out a small cloud. A thin haze was forming over the whole comet. Are you all right, he asked Annie. He had stopped showing off and being rude. He felt sure something was wrong. Looking up, George and Annie saw there were hundreds and hundreds of rocks all coming towards them at high speeds, and there was nowhere to hide. Asteroids, cried Annie. We're in an asteroid storm. 